Hi and welcome to the DE Physical Education Flip Learning videos. Antagonists, antagonistics and the type of muscle contractions. A joint cannot move by itself. It needs muscles to move the bones into position. When a muscle contracts, one end is anchored in place and the other end pulls the bone, causing the movement. If we use the bicep as an example, the anchor point is the scapula and the other end of the muscle attaches to the radius. The bicep is responsible for flexion of the elbow when the muscle contracts. The radius moves upwards towards the shoulder. A joint cannot move by itself. It needs muscles to move the bones into positions. When a muscle contracts, it is responsible for the movement that is occurring and it is said to be acting as the agonist. There can be more than one agonist acting at a joint, although this does depend on the type of movement that is being performed. An antagonistic muscle is one that works in opposition to the agonist, so when the bicep is contracting, the tricep is lengthening and acting as the antagonist, as you can see from the diagrams here. When one muscle is acting as an agonist and the other is acting as an antagonist, the muscles are said to be working together as a pair to produce the movement required. This arrangement is commonly referred to as antagonistic muscle action. If we look at flexion of the knee, the hamstrings are the agonist muscles and the quadriceps are the antagonistic muscle. Key terms you should know. Agonist. The muscle that is responsible for the movement that is occurring. Antagonist. The muscle that works in the opposition to the agonist to help produce the coordinated movement. Muscles you'll need to know for your exam. The deltoid. The tricep brachii. The latissimus dorsi. The gluteus medius. The gluteus maximus. The abductor magnus. And then we come to the hamstring. The hamstring group is split up into three small muscles. The bicep femoris, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. The gastrocnemius and the solace can be seen on both sides. We seen here on the left, and then this little muscle here on the right. The tibialis anterior, the abductus longus, the pectorialis minor, the pectorialis major, the deltoid, the tricep brachii from the front, the bicep brachii, the iliopsoas, and then we come to the quadricep group. Very similar to the hamstring group, it again is split up, however this time it's split into four. The rectus femoris, the vastus lateris, the vasta medialis, and the smallest one, the vastus intermedius. On this diagram, you can't quite see it, however, it would be just next to the, the vatius medialis. And then the gastrocnemius. The main agonists and antagonists for each of the joint actions. The joint action, the agonist and the antagonist will be shown in this diagram. Our elbow flexion, the agonist is the bicep and the tricep. Our elbow extension, the tricep and the bicep. The ankle plantar flexion, the gastrocnemius and the tibialis anterior the ankle dorsiflexion, the tibialis anterior and the gastrocnemius, the knee flexion, the hamstrings and the quadriceps, the knee extension, quadriceps and hamstrings, the hip flexion, iliopsoas slash hip flexors and the gluteals. Continuing on, the joint action is the hip abduction, the agonist is the abductors, the brevis longus and magnus, and the antagonist is the tensor facilia lati and the gluteus medius and minus. The hip abduction is the tensor facilia latius and gluteus medius and minus, and the abductors brevis longus and magus. Hip horizontal abduction, the abductors, the tensor facilia latius and the gluteus medius minus. The hip horizontal abduction, the tensor fascia latius and gluteus medius and minus, and the abductors. The shoulder flexion is the anterior deltoid and the latissimus dorsi. The shoulder extension slash hyperextension is the latissimus dorsi and the anterior deltoid. The shoulder horizontal abduction is the latissimus dorsi, the pectorals, and the shoulder horizontal abduction is the pectorals and the latissimus dorsi. The shoulder abduction is the posterior deltoid and the latissimus dorsi and the middle deltoid or the supraosonus. The shoulder abduction is the middle deltoid or supraosonus and the posterior deltoid slash latissimus dorsi. If I was you, I would pause the video and go through all the antagonistic pairs that can come up in your exam. 
I will keep going over these until you get them clear. Types of muscle contraction. When a muscle works, it contracts. A muscle can contract in different ways depending on the muscle action that is required. An isotonic contraction is when a muscle contracts to create movement. There are two types of isotonic contraction. When the muscle shortens and the fibers contract, a concentric contraction is taking place. And when the fibers contract as the muscle lengthens, an eccentric contraction is occurring. An isometric contraction takes place when the muscle is contracting, but there is no movement occurring. Key terms you should know. The concentric contraction. When a muscle shortens under tension. The eccentric contraction. When a muscle lengthens under tension or performs a negative work and acts as a break. And the isometric contraction. When a muscle is under tension but there is no visible movement. Isotonic contraction. A muscle causes movement in an isotonic contraction and there are two types. A concentric contraction. This is when the muscle shortens under tension. For example, the upward phase of a bicep curl. The bicep performs a concentric contraction. And the eccentric contraction. This is when the muscle lengthens under tension and does not relax. When a muscle contracts eccentrically, it is acting as a brake in helping control the movement of the body during negative work. For example, landing from a box jump. Isometric contraction. This is when a muscle can contract without actually lengthening or shortening and the result is that no movement occurs. An isometric contraction occurs when a muscle is acting, is acting as a fixator or acting against a resistance. A good example of this is the crucifix position in gymnastics. Practice question. Pause the video and answer these questions. Figure 22 shows a weightlifter performing a squat. Using the picture, identify the joint action, the main agonist, and the type of muscle contraction occurring at the hip and ankle joints as the weightlifter performs the downward phase of the squat.